Hello coffee lovers, welcome to Tron Cafe. This is part 4 of our series to mod the Gazia Classic Pro Espresso Machine. In this video, we will complete the entire process for the mod. I believe this is the most detailed modification video you will find on the Gazia Classic Pro. In this video, we will cover the setup of the PID controller for the first power up installation of components in the top box enclosure fix the cover issue and system test at this stage viewers will be very familiar with the mod process so this entire video will be in fast motion except for the section on the cover issue We start off with the PID controller settings. First thing to note, take safety precautions. Do not touch any power cables because the AC mains goes direct to the PID controller and the controller is exposed. So please be careful. I will go through briefly the settings for the controller. If you are interested to know more about the settings for the PID, please comment below and I will add the information in the descriptions. In the initial settings, we will configure the controller for both the brew and steam functions. You may refer to my schematics in part 3 of this series for the configuration. We will also make essential setup for the temperature sensor type the centigrade or Fahrenheit unit, the temperature offset between the sensor and inside of the boiler. Following that, we will set up the initial PID parameters for brew function and the temperature limits for steam function. The PID controller comes with a self-optimization process for PID parameters. So you may want to initiate that optimization if you wish to after you have completed the mod. We will show that process if there are any interests from the viewers. Steam setting. So I'm going to do the one setting. Setting one. Okay. We set the A one. So let's go here one. A one. One thirty seven. Success one. One thirty seven. Success. So let's have one. And each one. Next one. Each one. Each one. One thirty six. Nine. Nine. One thirty six. Nine. Let's see each one. For this process, please remember to unplug the power cable from the wall. It's for your own safety. Here we simply connect the remaining wire from the blue SSR to the PID. This wire was left out in the initial power out 
because we do not want to turn on the boiler's heating elements before the PID and other essential parameters are set up in the controller. Now that we have fully wired up the PID to the boiler, we set up the brew temperature, in this case 93 degrees Celsius, and power up the machine to check the PID functionality. Check to ensure that the boiler heats up and the temperature stabilizes at the preset temperature after a while. There may be some overshoot in temperature, but we can take care of that with some fine tuning in the parameters later on. It's time now to wrap up the components, starting with the cable management. Make sure that the cables are not touching hot components, open connectors are not touching each other, and use cable ties and clips when necessary. I redo leakage tests many times for obvious reasons. The key areas are the tubing adapters to the pressure gauge, manifold extension on the solenoid, and the adapter nut to the steam wing, the one beside the steam valve. As in the previous videos, use the blind basket and bring the pressure to 14 bars or so to check for any leakage.
For this part of the process, make sure the power cable is unplugged from the wall. The flow controller comes with a protective enclosure from Shades of Coffee. I think it's a good design and a simple one to protect the controller board. The installation, however, is difficult because you need to ensure that the open connections are not close to each other and for safety reasons, obviously. The board is installed with double-sided tape to the inside of the machine enclosure. Hopefully, it is reliable enough. some layers, make sure the layers is big enough so it does not close on the cables. Um, keeping the cables away from the contacts, only use switch plate, and just think when keep the cables away from the cables is hooked. Install the port meter to the flow controller or also called the dimmer switch. It's a simple process. I didn't like the knob uh, from the kit, so I ordered a separate knob for better aesthetics. If you'd like to know more, please add your comments and I'll reply. Again, this is a very simple process. It's a easy fix from the kit, but it works. Now we assemble back the top plate. It's a simple screw on from the bottom of the plate using the original screws.
we've been trying to fix. This is an issue perhaps resulting from me not reading the instruction manual in detail. Although I'm not sure if it's in the manual at all. The top cover didn't sit well on the top box. There were some alignment issues. It took me some time to figure out that the bracket for the pressure gauge needs to be oriented correctly to avoid interference with the funnel on the top cover. I'll let the video images explain itself for this solution. Just a safety check here to ensure the enclosure and top plate are assembled safely. So there you are, the mod with shades of copy is now complete. The kit works very well for me and I can see the amount of work and details put into it. So thank you Mr. Shades. In the upcoming video, I will discuss about the first tie-in with these modifications, the usefulness of these mods, as well as alternative mods.
I think that's that.